Hello and welcome to this, the continuation of my Builder React UI library series. This is uh, kind of like episode two. In the first video, we went ahead and set up our React application. We set up bundling. We set up um, basically the entire UI library and deployed it, published it to NPM, and tested it in a separate, separate application to make sure that it works correctly. Um, and so what we currently have is a TypeScript-based React UI library, but no styling. So in this video, we're going to uh, go ahead and tackle uh, adding styling to our components, as well as adding Storybook. And I'll kind of go over what those two, uh, what we'll do for both of those steps. Um, so first for styling, we're going to go ahead and go with Tailwind CSS. So if you've never heard of Tailwind, it is a utility first uh, uh, CSS framework. I, feel, I think I've read it so many times, I'm repeating it verbatim. But the idea is that you kind of have this like almost CSS-like language in classes, using utility classes, that allows you to define what things look like. And there are a lot of different advantages to this uh, setup. One of them is uh, you know being able to kind of jump in and start doing things um, right away without having to do much of a big setup. Um, in terms of styling, like, you know, base styles and stuff like that. Um, the other one, uh, the other advantage is that, um, well, honestly, it does kind of look like CSS, and, but you don't have the pitfall of having like random values for widths and padding. So everything's kind of a little bit more uniform. So this, this kind of helps you along quite a bit. And a lot of big websites are built with Tailwind CSS these days. Uh, of course, you could always do styled components. Uh, you could do just regular CSS and post CSS for um, compiling it. There are a lot of different options that you can have. So, But for this project, we're going to use Tailwind just because that's kind of in vogue right now. And they have this neat little guide for uh, installing Tailwind CSS with Vite. Now, the huge advantage of us using Vite is that a lot of these technologies do have a specific Vite-related guide. Um, that makes it easier for us to build it. So let's go ahead and follow the guide. There are some changes that are not in the guide that we're going to go ahead and tackle, um, and I'll point those out as we go. So first of all, let's go ahead and install all of our dependencies. So we need to install Tailwind. Uh, we need to install PostCSS. PostCSS is what compiles Tailwind, and we have to also install Auto Prefixer. Now, Auto Prefixer is just something that uh, adds a prefix to some of your CSS uh, properties so that they work in uh, different browsers. Like if there's like a web WebKit specific property and stuff like that. Um, all right, we got it installed. Fantastic. So now we should be able to initialize Tailwind. So we're going to do this command. Great, and what that does is create the configuration files for us. Now, first thing we need to do is look at the Tailwind configuration file. It has uh, this little um, JavaScript object right over here. And the one we're really concerned with for this video is content. Uh, now, the way Tailwind kind of works is um, it is this massive kind of CSS framework uh, of utilities, and there are a lot of utilities, and you're not going to use the vast majority of them. Um, so what Tailwind does is have a purge process, and what that what that'll do is um, it'll look at the CSS file, it'll look at your actual code, and it will um, try to figure out which classes you're actually using and delete the rest. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like here. So I'm going to just add a quick comment here. We want to reference the library only. Uh, we don't want to reference the source uh, directory because we're not using it for the final production file. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we have our next step here, configuring template paths. So our template paths are going to look a little bit different. We're going to go to lib. We're going to do this. I'm going to go ahead and keep the JS, TS, JSX, TSX thing here, um, even though we should be writing only in TypeScript uh, for this application. I think it's totally fine to just leave the JavaScript support there uh, just in case we need it. Next, we need to go ahead and create a tailwind.css file. Um, let's go ahead and do that. I see that they, they call it index.css. Maybe that actually makes a little bit more sense, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and keep it as tailwind CSS. I've used this in a bunch of different projects and I don't feel like writing this out. So we'll go ahead and just copy it. And there we go. Um, so Tailwind is uh, the Tailwind plugin for post CSS. Uh, looks at this directive over here and kind of imports all the different stuff and compiles all the different stuff we need to make the CSS work for us. So this is why it looks like this. Um, next, now I didn't see it here because of the way that we're using it is a little bit different, but we need to actually import that file. 
So uh, in the directions here, we'd be updating the index.css file in our directions. Uh, whoops, my keyboard is, okay, yeah. In our directions, we're gonna go ahead and go into our main.css and we're gonna go ahead and import it here. Cool. Let's go ahead and uh, restart our server. I've had it running since the last video, just kidding. Um, and let's see what happens. So no utility classes were detected. That is correct. So let's go ahead and add our first utility class here. So we want to add a, let's, we're going to add a red background to our button just to test out how well it, it to just to test out if it works. Oh, that was immediate. Look at that hot module reload right there. So yeah. Um, so that was an immediate update and we now have uh, Tailwind CSS working in our project. Um, and this is fantastic. You can do all kinds of really awesome stuff with Tailwind. Um, Tailwind also, you might've seen it in the config, um, has plugins, but it also has a lot of like custom customization um, options for you to customize Tailwind so that it works exactly how you need it for your project, um, which is really awesome. Um, I've, I've seen this, I've seen CSS, uh, Tailwind used in a lot of different companies and it's a really cool piece of technology. Now, I don't really like this development experience of what we're doing right over here, where we just kind of try to render a button under source uh, over here. And uh, where was it? It was, it was an app, there we go. So we're just like rendering this button here. That's not really a great way to build out a UI library. Um, there's a lot of different interesting tooling out there for building out UI libraries. And the one we're gonna look at is Storybook. So Storybook, just like uh, Tailwind, has a whole Storybook for Veet. Um, this was a blog post, I think it might've been launched, but uh, the directions here still hold true, so that's great. Um, so what Storybook allows you to do is create kind of like this um, list of different components that you have and render them in isolation from the application. So it's more like, a well, it's like a library. You, you look through it. Uh, you have different like states for different uh, components. You can even like test them out. There's so much cool stuff. And it's actually really great for exporting as documentation for your team internally. Um, so actually, I think that's one of the best use cases of it is uh, not just for local development, but being able to showcase that development and be able to have all these components accessible with you know, documentation and so on. Really great for it, like the larger you get, but it's really great for even small projects because it makes them so much easier. So let's go ahead and uh, follow, the, uh, follow the directions here. Well, I guess I closed it out. All right, we're gonna look at the directions here. Uh, there turns out there is a Vite builder. Get it now? Yeah, that's what we wanna do. We wanna get it right now. Um, let's go ahead and paste that command in and let's see what happens. So we're gonna go ahead and do in, uh, initialize, so we do storybook, we're initializing it and we're using the builder for Veet. What it'll do is, while well, it runs build, it runs the pre-build. Okay, well, it runs the entirety of build actually. Um, then it builds out stuff. You can see the style.css, that wasn't there before, that's from Tailwind. And then it starts to add different plugins. Okay, we do want the ESLint plugin. And now it starts installing the dependencies. So Storybook used to be kind of a pain to set up, especially if you wanted to use TypeScript. Um, and with their whole builder API, it's been just super easy these days to, to use Storybook wherever you need to. Ooh, we can close out of it actually. It's gonna take a second longer. It should try to build it one more time and it'll actually fail um, because of some rules that we have set up. There we go, okay, so preparing to install dependencies, it took that long. All right, cool, so now it builds and it actually fails. Uh, and why it fails is because of this stories directory. So um, Storybook creates a, uh, automatically creates a stories directory under your source directory. Um, I think, I'm sure there's a way to turn that off. I don't really have a, an interest in it, I just delete it uh, manually. But we can kind of look at, you know, this is what a, a really, comp no, well, comprehensive and documented, uh, um, your story might look like. So, you know, this is like worth checking out and seeing like what you can do here. You can have, you can use MDX files, you can add custom CSS, but for our purposes, we're actually gonna just get rid of this. There we go. So I'm gonna restart uh, Vim real quick. 
and we can get to making it work with our application. So there's gonna be this new folder called dot storybook and um, it'll have a main.ts and a preview.ts. We're gonna look at main.ts first and just like for that, uh, the tailwind uh, up changes that we needed to make, we're just gonna change the directory from source to lib for stories. So that's, it's gonna look for stories um, in the lib directory instead of the source directory. I think that's actually all we have to do here. So let's go ahead and start Storybook real quick. So npm run Storybook. Um, so Storybook, again, as part of its install process, one of the things it's set up for us is um, the Storybook command right here. So end the build Storybook command. So if you want to build and deploy this, you, that's, that's the command that you can use. Um, so it's really great that it sets up all these things for us. And uh, it runs, but there are no stories. So let's go ahead and create our first story. We're going to create a story for button. Uh, one of the conventions I really like is just having, um, you know, if we have a button, if we have a component, we have the co component name again repeated here for the actual component. And then we have like a dot stories for stories or dot tests or a spec or whatever else for tests um, and so on. So we have an empty story right now. And this is gonna look a little bit weird and boilerplate-y, I think, um, what I'm about to do. But this is how Storybook kind of works. It is very type safe, which is fantastic. Um, that it's like one of the way, one of the cool ways of being able to test out that your, AP, uh, your API uh, for your component actually makes sense. So we're gonna import meta and story object. We're gonna also import our button. Um, kind of thinking that maybe we should do a default export of button in the future, but we'll see, we'll see. We'll do, we'll create, it, we'll create a meta um, constant. So the meta constant is kind of like the settings for your storybook uh, story. And we're gonna say we're, we want to deal with component button, um, and that'll make sure that anytime we run a story within here, oh, lowercase meta, um, it will use this configuration files. So that configuration file. Um, so each story can be its own separate export. So we're gonna do. We're, first of all, we're gonna create a story type. So it's story object type of button. And now all of this stuff that I'm writing here, I didn't just like figure it out out of nowhere. It is in the documentation. Um, so you don't have to memorize all of this magic over here. Uh, you have this, you know, you have a lot of documentation here. I think this is actually what it is right here. So this is this is this is kind of the guide that we're following here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, export a default story. I kind of like this the idea of having a default story of like what it, what does this component look like when it's uh, in its default state. And I'm going to keep the arguments here empty. Um, and then, actually, no, we cannot leave them empty. We're going to add a child argument. Uh, we'll do children, and we'll do click me. And let's see if Storybook was able to, yeah, it's right over here. So as you can see, we were able to render it right directly here if we had multiples of these stories. So we could do, um, let's do uh, emoji. And let's, let's see if we can, let's, let's see if I can insert an emoji in here real quick. Uh, there we go. We're gonna have this laughing kind of whatever, what is it, sweat smile, I think it's called. Um, emoji right over here. We, so on default, we have the click me argument, but if you click on emoji, you see what it looks like as an emoji. And you even have these controls here, so we actually we can actually change the arguments real time. Um, my product right here so we can see what it looks like. So it's really great that you get all these different controls and then there are actions, interactions and documentation, all kinds of other stuff. I really recommend looking through Storybook because this base use case is more than worth installing it and all the extra stuff it comes with makes it even more worth it. Now, you might have noticed something. Um, this button's not red. What's going on? So Storybook does not support Tailwind out of the box. Uh, without us importing it first. Uh, so Storybook does not know about um, our main.ts import right over here. So it's not able to render that CSS. So what we wanna do now is go back to the dot .storybook page. We're gonna go ahead and go into preview. Now preview is kind of like the master settings file for whenever you're well, previewing stuff. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and just do an import. Let's do it after the type, just so that it's a little bit nicer. And we're gonna 
go to that lib, we're gonna import tailwind.css and we're gonna get that red button. So uh, just with these like few different steps, we have storybook running, we have um, tailwind running and it's all running within Vite. And if we build stuff, so it, when it comes to the tailwind part, if we do an npm run build, we'll get a style.css file, which, there we go, it's, it's hidden from me here. Um, which then gets uh, imported correctly into the application. Now, this looks like a lot of stuff here. So if you are using, um, well, there's a lot of like reset code over here so that it works with Tailwind and quite a few different like, uh, what do you call it? The, um, the var uh, CSS variables over here and properties. Um, so there are ways of like improving that situation. But if all of your, uh, you know, styling is running through the, the Cottage UI or your user interface library, um, you basically get the, the base styling out of the box with those components. So that's, so that's fantastic. Um, so that's it for, so that's it for this video. We're going to go ahead and, um, in the next video, we're going to set up testing so they can kind of tie it all together. And then we're going to build like a fully fledged, you know, end to end component so we can see what that looks like, what that experience looks like and what, it, what the experience of using those component components looks like too.